the IBM missed its earnings very, very badly, and it weighed on the Dow. It's a Dow, major Dow component. And you can see how hard that this IBM sold down. So having said that, this is why the Dow didn't come go higher, let's say, because that had a weighting. Yes, the Dow ended up 10 points positive. So it took a lot, a lot, a lot of other Dow components to offset that IBM news. One of the things that haven't happened all year, we were overbought. We were overbought here. And every down move, they came in and they chased it. They chased the markets up here to the highs. And people started buying right over here on the Dow. And, and when people chase markets or algorithms are in play to the buy side, they all get in up here. And then you get, it's right back down here where the jobs report started on the Dow. How about that? So this was that upside volatility in an algorithmic program that's used to buy the Dow 30 stocks. We get up to the highs and we got right back down here to what we call a double bottom low on the Dow in our platform. Now, each one of these lines are one quarter delta in the uh, market maker platform. 27.42 per line per one fourth delta. So one of the things about the Dow component is that seasonality is changing. And we've always talked about it every year for the last 30 years. One of the things that we had was a parabolic move straight up. It's one of the most hated rallies on Wall Street in U.S. history. Why? Because people aren't in it. There are lots of things that go hand in hand with the Dow that money that's on the sideline, foreign money around the world because of the banking crises that are happening around the world, the U.S. is a safe haven and they are coming in and buying up equities in, in, in the uh, Dow and the NYSE and blue chips and all of it because money's got to go to work. So that dip mentality, by the dip mentality, Every time you had a correction, bam, you made another higher high. You had a correction, bam, you had a, got overbought, corrected, but you still made higher highs in this bull. And the bull is here. The seasonality of the bull is, you know, it's an old myth. Go away in May and come back in November. Well, listen, that's an old myth. We don't pay attention to that. What we're going to be paying attention to is how now that we've got the overbought process in, in, and we have the correction that we told you about. Not these little mini corrections. Yes, they were corrections that we called for, but they were just for intraday. So let's keep that straight. And that the bottom support levels held in the volatility. We had higher... You know, these lows are higher than other lows in here. And we were overbought here in the Dow. And then, bam, look at that big sell, 60-minute bar. That's huge. They came right back in and bought that bad jobs report. That's all about volatility. So one of the things is the correction is in play. We're going to be watching what this resistance level right here, this is going to be the major key bar at 14,690 for the Dow. The Dow had a closing print of 14,547.50, period. And on the 60-minute chart, we have other resistance levels, such as these double diamonds right here on the bottom of that 60-minute bar. That's going to play a major role at resistance. We're going to be monitoring where that bull mentality is, where that money has to go to work. Is the Federal Open Market Committee and the Ben Bernanke and his little squad going to continue buying $85 billion a month in purchases and they're printing money around the world? Printing presses have been working anyway for the last, let's say, four years. And we're four years into this bull run. We've had, you know, it takes a long time to get a bull to work like we did back in 1982 to year 2000. It was 18 years, no doubt. However, there is a pattern that money will have to go to work, and if everything stays in play that the bulls have been preaching about all year, 
then we will go higher in the Dow. But we're going to be in a trading range with price with a lot of volatility. And it's called volatility. That the market, we, we've had a one-sided market. These little dips, buy them up. They didn't work here. They bought the dip and we made a lower low right here. They bought the dip and comes all the way down to the lows where the jobs report was down in this area right here for the Dow. I will tell you that the major wall of resistances will be right across here where we had previous highs like right here. That's going to be a major, major resistance level. And that's going to be right here where my pointer is. That's resistance number three. We will have another major resistance level right here. This will be resistance number two. And resistance number one will be right in this part. So let's blow up the resistance areas, MMTs. Resistance 1, resistance 2, and 3 is going to be up here. So, this will be the floor that we have here. This will be the ceiling that it will have to go through. And it's going to have to take out this area first. We have major earnings in play. If IBM acts well, we will look at buying that IBM off of the bottom, I can tell you. Um, it's a great company. It's been around forever. They have weak growth at the moment. Listen, IBM told a story about growth in the U.S. and about this quarterly earnings we're in right now. They told a story, and they told it well. And when IBM has something to say, it's a barometer. It's, it's, it's something that all fund managers, hedge fund managers, mutual fund managers, ever, everybody, institutions are looking at it. But they're going to buy it. So when IBM comes back into play, it's a good buy. They start buying that on the dip. That's going to help move the Dow higher to these resistance levels that we're talking about in here. Okay. But this will be the top right here. What we'll be looking for in this volatility, the bull side of volatility back up is where it hits either much lower highs at reversals. And we'll know on on Monday and then we're going to go into the month of May so we'll be updating our network around the world all our trader network around the world we encourage you to go to stockmarketfunding.com we encourage you to click on go up to the trading tab here's a form you can fill out if you're interested just fill that out when it pops up now hit open an account when you hit open an account, you can get a five-day free trial with this. Click to get started. We'll give you trading capital. Yes, we will. Takes money to make money. If you think you're going to make money on $20,000 only in the stock market, you got another thing coming. You need at least fifty to a couple hundred thousand dollars, and we will provide that for you. You read the page. You inquire. You won't have the pattern day trading rule that people suffer from with account balances below 25000 We encourage you to take advantage of the SMF network. We provide lots of things to the public, and we try to really, truly help you. And here's the latest video that we just updated on the S&P 500. Get going now. Be proactive. Every one of you, that are watching this video outside of our trader network all the people that have sat on the sideline or been burned by markets in the past you have a right to come back and make money and you have a right to come back and get engaged with the markets the right way we will help you we are your support and your management team and we're here for you all you have to do is get out of your fear put it behind you and then you come to us and our market making management team and all the people with SMF is, is here to support you. So once again, Dallas had that big correction that we talked about. We're going to be monitoring on Monday through the calendar earnings. We got more Dow components coming out. Caterpillar will re report earnings on Monday. And we'll do what's coming up on this next week. So major resistance is these two 60 minute bars down. That's going to be the challenge on the way up for the Dow Jones. Once again, be proactive. We are here to help you.